and welcome to another episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Abby Lockwood. And I'm your host, Spencer Lingefelter. And today, BATV has a scoop on the top world and local news, including a $1 billion payout planned for NFL players and a Kane County Health Department advisory on the recall of pine nuts. In world news, European leaders are holding crisis talks on how to deal with the large number of immigrants risking their lives to cross from the Mediterranean Sea. The number of people fleeing war and poverty in the Middle East and Africa has risen sharply in the recent months. More than 35,000 are thought to have crossed this year from Africa to Europe. An Algerian man was arrested on Sunday in France over an alleged terrorist plot after he shot himself by accident. French police have prevented five terror attacks in recent months. Now let's head over to Bill McGrath with the Municipal Minute. Hi, I'm Bill McGrath, the City Administrator, and it's time for the Municipal Minute segment of It's News to Me on BATV. Uh, today's taping is Wednesday, April 22nd. Um, the, it's already time for people to be cleaning out their yards, and we wanted to reiterate that you can now put out your landscape waste uh, in craft paper bags on your regular garbage day, uh, so long as it has a waste sticker. The uh, waste stickers are the same cost as your uh, garbage stickers. In terms of cleaning out brush, uh, we will start on the, uh, with that with the, uh, at the beginning of May, and the exact schedule is on the city website. Uh, please think twice about putting uh, large quantities of brush on the parkway before the weekend, uh, before your appropriate pickup date, so that we can keep the parkways looking nice. Uh, there's a, a, a streetscape project this summer to rebuild Houston Street from Island Avenue at City Hall up to uh, Batavia Avenue. It, it will be uh, it will necessitate uh, movements of some of the activity, particularly the. Uh, Windmill City Festival uh, in July, which will be moved to Engstrom Park. Uh, none of the other usual park district events that happen uh, down on the river walk will be moved, uh, especially those that occur at the Bond Center. So we apologize for any inconvenience this might cause, especially our residents who live near Engstrom Park during the uh, Windmill City Festival, but um, we think that you'll uh, like the results of the project. Construction should start in June and be done by September or October, and it will uh, be a complete uh, rebuild, reconstruction of the uh, street. Um, you will have a uh, addition of a new sidewalk on the north side of Houston on the hill from Water Street up to Batavia Avenue. And of course, that will lead to the sidewalk that will take people to the north to McKee Street, where one of our new uh, pedestrian or bicyclist activated uh, flashing lights will be installed to help people safely get across Batavia Avenue. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the residents for uh, voting uh, and it'd be good to work with their uh, representatives and we also wanted to thank Lisa Clark who will be leaving the council after uh, 16 years of service and uh, she did a really nice job. The uh, city has a 50-50 parkway tree program. Uh, that is where we'll split the cost with the homeowner to put a particular species of tree in their parkway, depending on the placement of the utilities uh, at that particular location. The trees uh, for spring planting have all been uh, paid for and our planting has already begun, but there are still trees left uh, to be planted in the fall. So if you're at all interested, you can go to the city website for all the details, including cost and the species of trees that you can ask to be planted. If you notice in Batavia, we plant a variety of trees on our parkways. The reason for this is to protect the urban forest, as we call it, from uh, invasion of any kind of uh, bugs or blight or disease. When you have uh, a single species uh, for blocks and blocks, uh, you can have all that area wiped out. Uh, this way, by alternating different species of trees, we can uh, avoid uh, having large areas deforested all at once. On May 1st and 2nd is the citywide garage sale. It's the 21st annual citywide garage sale. It's on uh, Friday and Saturday, May 1st and 2nd, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. throughout the entire community. Now the proceeds, as always, by those participating in it, uh, support the 4th of July fireworks show, so we uh, thank you for supporting this tradition we have. The 
annual books versus badges benefit basketball game is going to be Saturday evening, April 25th at 6 p.m. at Batavia High School. This is a charity basketball game between uh, Batavia School District 101 teachers and the Batavia Police and Fire Departments. Uh, the admission is $5 for adults and $3 for uh, students, children, or seniors. The proceeds from this game support uh, Kane County CASA and National Child Abuse Awareness. So if there's any more information you need about that, there's a press release on the very front page of the city website. Lastly, on Sunday, May 3rd at 1.30, the annual Loyalty Day Parade steps off. Uh, it's on the uh, east side of town. It starts near the Public Works Garage on Verdant Road, comes down Wilson Street, uh, takes a left-hand turn at South River, and goes down at where it finishes at the VFW. So you're more than glad to uh, come on over and bring your chair and watch uh, the nice parade. Uh, it seems that more and more of the community itself is part of the parade because of all the uh, teams and wonderful community activities we have. This year's theme, uh, this is, by the way, this is the 41st annual parade. The theme is Batavia leading loyalty to our nation. So um, if you're interested, we sure hope for good weather. It's held, uh, whether, the, uh, whether it's sunny or rainy, uh, except in case of really dangerous weather, at that point, it would be canceled and will not be redone. So if you want more information about the Loyalty Day Parade, you can go to the Batavia VFW website, uh, or you can go to the city website, which has some information and uh, a link. So that's all uh, I have to report to you this week, and uh, see you next time on the Municipal Minute. Thank you. According to the BBC, pro-Russian rebels have shelled Ukrainian army positions east of a key city in breach of a ceasefire deal. This comes a day after the U.S. accused Russia of sending more troops to the region. Moscow denies any involvement. In U.S. news, a judge has approved a plan worth $1 billion to compensate former American football players with head injuries. Multiple lawsuits filed against the NFL hid knowledge of the concussion risks. The deal could cost the league more than $1 billion over 65 years. And now let's check it out with Michelle Martzell. Hello, I'm Michelle Martzell, Promotional Services Manager here at the Batavia Public Library. The library's April 26th Sundays on Stage program features singer Anthony Abitacola. Abitacola and his accompanist, Todd Scott, will perform a mix of big band, jazz, and traditional pop standards. The program begins at 2 p.m. Registration is required. Please register online or call the library reference desk. May 2nd is free comic book day here at the library. Students are invited to stop by the library and pick up a free comic courtesy of Graham Cracker Comics in St. Charles. High school students can receive a comic at the reference desk and younger students can pick up a comic at the youth services desk. So come and get them. To learn about other library programs and special events, check out the library's online calendar at bataviapubliclibrary.org. See you at the library. The White House has said that a U.S. counterterrorism operation in January accidentally killed two hostages that were being held by Al-Qaeda. President Barack Obama described it as a painful loss that he profoundly regretted. Two other Americans thought to be Al-Qaeda members were also killed. A lawyer for the man who shot President Ronald Reagan was told, has told a court his client should be permanently released from his mental health hospital. John Hinckley Jr. shot the president who survived and three others outside a Hilton Hotel in Washington in 1981. Hinckley was found not guilty by reason of insanity, but was sent for treatment to a Washington hospital. Now let's head over the, to Holly Deachman with the chamber chat. Hello and welcome to Chamber Chat. I am Holly Deachman, the President and CEO of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. We have two great things coming up in the next month through the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. We have Ladies' Night Out, which will be celebrated on Thursday, April 30th from 3 until 9 p.m. Many downtown retailers will be participating by offering discounts during this special event. For more details, please visit downtownbatavia.com. 
We also would like to welcome Banna Nutrition. They will be hosting their grand opening celebration on May 20th from 4 until 6 p.m. Banna Nutrition is located in the Batavia Plaza next to East China Inn. Thank you for joining us on Chamber Chat. For additional information on Batavia Chamber events, please visit our website at bataviachamber.org. <laughs> in local news, a 22-year-old Roar man has been charged with burglary. Police said he was... Mm-hmm, totally was going to read that wrong. Just gonna, okay. In local news, a 22-year-old Aurora man has been charged with burglary. Police said he was caught breaking into a car in Batavia early Saturday. Jeffrey J. Hawkins Jr. has been charged with four felony counts of burglary, along with possession of a controlled substance and a criminal damage to property. No one was injured in a fire that caused an estimated $200 in damage to Crosstown Pub in Batavia on Wednesday night. Improperly discarded smoking materials caused the fire, according to a press release from the Batavia Fire Department. And now let's head over to the park bench with Katie Drum and a segment of Now You Know from Avenue Mobile. Hi there, I'm Katie Drum, the Marketing and Sponsorship Coordinator for the Batavia Park District, bringing you news from the park bench. We have a wonderful event coming up in nearly a month away, which is the Touch a Truck Day. On May 15th from 10.30 a.m. to noon, kids of all ages can explore a variety of vehicles at Touch a Truck Day, located at the East Side Community Center parking lot at 14 North Van Buren Street. There could be a crane, a fire truck, tractor, dump truck, limousine, bus, police car, and more. Parent supervision is required and cameras are highly recommended. And this is a free event. The rain date will be Friday, May 22nd. And did you know that April is National Volunteer Month? That's right. Uh, we are so grateful for the individuals that devote their time in service of others. And volunteering is great because you can enhance the your own life while giving back to the community. And the Batavia Park District is seeking volunteers this season for events such as Windmill City Festival and the Windmill World 5K. And any amount of time that you can afford is greatly appreciated. So come be part of the fun. For more information about volunteer opportunities, please call 630-879-5235 or visit our volunteer page at www.bataviaparks.org. And are you gearing up to plan a special someone a birthday party? Well, why not let the Batavia Park District party planners do all the work for you? Make the most out of your son or daughter's birthday party and turn our party experts. You can pick a party package with themes that include crafts, games, free playtime, music, and more. For more information, call our birthday party coordinator at 630-406-5282, extension 2211. And the Batavia Park District has many opportunities for you and your family to enjoy a picnic at one of our pavilions. Our parks and shelters are perfect for family reunions, get-togethers, and picnics. All pavilions are first-come, first-served basis, so let us help make your next occasion truly special. So call 630-406-5282 or visit bataviaparks.org for more information on park pavilion rentals. And thank you, and next time we'll see you in May. I'm Alan Wolf, and I've been an auto technician at Batavia Avenue Mobile for 30 years and we're going to go through and show you some of the things that we have available for you and for your car. Very simply we go through and plug in a scan tool to do the diagnostic work. What we would do is go in and pick out which vehicle that we have. It is a Honda Civic. We have to scroll through and pick out which exact vehicle we would want, sedan and which engine it is. And then from there we can go into the different things that are available for this car. Engine, transmission, anti-lock brakes, and into the airbag system. And we can work on all of those systems. They are all available to us to get uh, diagnostic information from. So now I have to reach down and change what's called a personality key. 
so that we can actually communicate with all the different cars. They're all slightly different. The diagnostic link is located usually in a very fun spot underneath the dash. And uh, now we'll check and see if there are any fault codes. Um, there's no codes to display either temporary or permanent in this car. Um, everything has been maintained pretty well on this, so there's nothing wrong. Um, basically what you would look for to see if you needed to have diagnostic work done would be uh, the little, usually an engine diagram light that's on the dash. We can get a shot of that. So it's a very small yellow light in the shape of an engine. Sometimes it says service engine soon or service engine now. Um, not to be confused with the maintenance required light, that's usually for an oil change, um, but it's usually a little yellow light. Um, you can usually drive the car if that light comes on to get it in to have service on. The only time you would not want to keep driving the car is if that light was flashing at you um, because that could be a, a more damaging problem that you would not want to drive the car for a misfire that uh, could damage the catalytic converter. So that's the only time you would not want to drive if that light was on. Um, we can also go through and one of the things that diagnostic capabilities have on these is you'd be able to go in and look at all of the sensors and everything that puts uh, information into the onboard computer in the car. And that's typically you know, what would be a problem. A uh, very common problem on these are evaporative emission system leaks um, where either the fuel cap is bad or something in the, the fuel system would be a problem. That's a very common emissions failure related one that we see all the time. Um, oxygen sensors, spark plugs, ignition misfires, all very common on just about every car manufacturer. And uh, now you know. In local news, the Kane County Health Department is advising residents that Superior Nut and Candy of Chicago is recalling four ounce packages of pine nuts because they have the potential to be contaminated with salmonella. No illnesses have been reported to date in connection with the product, but it was distributed nationwide in retail stores. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. As always, most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on our YouTube under BATV1017. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our monthly newsletter to enter a drawing for gift cards good at local businesses and stay up to date with the station's latest happenings. Thanks again for watching. I'm Abby Lockwood. And I'm Spencer Lingefelter. And, and that's, that's news, news to me. me. Hey, that's news to me!